what's on your travel bucket list. Today, we're each sharing one from our list, plus how we'd use points and miles to make it happen. Welcome to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad. We are three moms who've discovered how to leverage credit card welcome offers to get hundreds of thousands of dollars of travel expenses for nearly free. We've used credit card points and miles to take vacations to places like Hawaii, Paris, Greece, Maldives, Japan, and so much more. And the best part, we each still have 800 plus credit scores. Imagine being able to take the vacation of your dreams for nearly free. It's totally possible and we're here to show you how. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Pam, Alex's mom. And I'm Jess. Let's talk points. We've been able to cross some amazing destinations off our travel bucket list thanks to points and miles, but of course we each still have way more that we want to see. Thankfully, there are plenty of cards to earn us more points and miles so we can continue to check amazing destinations off our list. Today, we're each going to share one destination from our travel bucket list that we have yet to visit and exactly how we would make that trip happen. So Pam, why don't you kick it off? What's a destination that's currently on your bucket list that you haven't been to? And I feel like this is hard for you because you've been to a lot of places. So I'm curious to hear what you're going to say. Well, first of all, next year, the thing that I really want to do in uh, 2025, we were supposed to pick just one destination, but I want what I really want to do, and then I'll go into my one destination, is I really want to do an A and A round the world trip. So that is a phenomenal deal. Um, I know that one of our podcasts with Devin about her honeymoon, she talks about it. And that has been long on my list. It may include this destination that I'm going to talk about, but maybe it won't um, because you have to be really flexible. But I definitely want to do that. And that is my number one bucket list thing left to do. Uh, well, I, you know, one of them. Okay, so my my single destination that I want to go to is one that um, we had planned. And I think Alex, when did, was it in 2020 that we were going to go or 2021? Yeah, it was 2020. So it got canceled. Yes. Surprise, surprise. So uh, my daughters and I love to go on a trip together and we had planned a trip where we were going to Barcelona. Such an odd, you know, group of uh, cities when I think about it. But it's just sometimes how points and miles go. It's kind of like where we're where we can get the award flight to. And then it's like, okay, well, we'll do this and that. So maybe, are you going to explain what we were going to do? You were going to explain what we were going to do originally, right? Okay. And how we were going to get there. Yeah. So we were going to do, um, go to Barcelona. Alex and I were going to go on uh, Iberia and it was a really good deal. But then I think I pushed the Morocco part. I don't know if everybody was really onto that, but I was like, I want to go to Morocco. And so I had pushed that part. And from there, we were going to go, um, where were we go? Where was our last, was it Venice that was our last? Yes, I totally forgot about that because, oh my gosh, I come, I 100% forgot Venice was on that radar. Like, I did not remember. Who would put those three together? But it was kind of like when you get a group of people together and everybody's saying, I really want to go here. Yeah. Well, and two, we were having a really hard time flying, finding flights home from Morocco. Right. And so we were like, okay, well, there's a direct flight from Morocco to Venice. And we found business class flights on United for like 70,000 points out of Venice. So we're like, okay, we'll go see Venice too. And then we'll go because I think not all of us had been to Venice. I've never been there. And so there was a handful of us. That, well, there's only a handful of us going, but there was a couple of us who hadn't been to Venice. So we're like, okay, we'll do that. But that's so funny because that is super random, and I totally forgot that Venice was part of that trip. Yeah, so so that is the destination that I have yet to make happen. I would like to go to Morocco. So I would probably fly into Marrakesh, and we weren't going to do that because one of my daughters had been there, and so we were originally going to fly into Fez. But since I, if I'm going just to Morocco, I want to go to multiple cities. So we're going to, I would fly into Marrakesh. Um, now I can do that, um, using American airlines miles, um, for, and it's a great deal, really. 
So you can fly on Royal Air Maroc. I don't know if that's how I'm pronouncing it. From New York City or from uh, Montreal. And I do like flying on um, out of Canada. And so I could fly um, a good use of some AA miles that I have sitting around. Or 88K from United. And I do love United Polaris. That was from New York City or Montreal. I think that I'm not positive if the AA ones were from Montreal also. So that's how I would get there. That is a great deal. Now, staying there, as luck would have it, there is a Park Hyatt Marrakesh. And so that is where I would want to stay. And I would for sure use a suite uh, upgrade award to upgrade to a suite there. I would have been shocked if your bucket list destination did not have a Park Hyatt. Yes. So I am not at all surprised, but this sounds like an amazing trip. You're, this is be one of those episodes where afterwards I go Google, like, how how can I go to all these places? I start I start looking for award flights and hotels. 100%. Yeah. Well, Alex, you could, or you guys could just come with me. My, my deal is like, who wants to go to Morocco for with? Me? Yeah, yeah. I volunteer as tribute, uh, Pam. So, so that's my next thing after I get this all figured out and plan. Like, going with me on there. Who wants to be crazy enough to go all around Morocco? We did Singapore in March. Maybe we could do Morocco in this coming March. Yeah, but I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess Jess's schedule's already full. Well, we might. I'm going to Japan in March, but that's only a week. You know, I have yeah, some there's three other weeks in the month. Yeah, or maybe we could do April or something. So after Marrakesh, three days in Marrakesh, and I think that Megan has been to Marrakesh. I know she's been to Morocco, so she can give us some hints too. I would then want to go to Fez, which is was where we originally were starting. Um, you can take a train. It's a six hours on a train. I know, Jess, you like trains. You can also fly Air Morocco, and, and it would be about five hours. You know, so it's like, okay, it, it does seem long, doesn't it? So, yeah, like, why is that so long? Morocco's not that um, big of a country. I don't know. Maybe, you know, that's what I saw when I was looking yesterday. Maybe but, it wasn't know, a direct flight. Maybe it wasn't a direct flight. Maybe it went to Casablanca or something first. Now, staying at um, in Fez. There is a Marriott Hotel. It's called the Fez Marriott Hotel Janan Palace. Now, this is the crazy thing, is that this was, when I was looking yesterday, it was 15K a night. How many Marriott Hotels do you know are 15K a night? Not I didn't even many. know there were any that were 15K a night. No, I don't either. So I'd have to really check into that a little bit more and make sure they just, someone just didn't add the name Marriott to it. But I think I saw it on the Marriott site, so I know it's a Marriott Hotel. Okay. I looked up the flight because I was like, there is no way it takes five hours to get from Morocco or Marrakesh to Fez. And they have nonstop flights on Ryanair. It takes an hour and 10 minutes. Well, oh, okay. Okay. You were looking at Royal Air Morocco maybe, and they yes. have a, a one-stop flight where that's where you get the five hours from. So yes. what you would think that says, I was like, yeah, a that's one hour, five hour train ride or a six hour flight, that doesn't add up. Yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, for fact checking for me because I'm like that's really weird. You know, I might as well get on the train. No problem. Like, oh, Morocco's perfect. not that. And now big. I'm like, is the Marriott actually 150k a night? And you uh like forgot to add a zero to that, or is it really? No, 15K I bet that night? one is 15. Somebody fact checked that one too. But yeah, I was like shocked. The other thing that uh, when we had planned to go is that we wanted to stay in a Riyadh, which is kind of a traditional lodging in uh, Morocco. And definitely at some point on my trip, I want to do that. That is something you could definitely use Capital One Venture Miles and use the points racer to do that. But I think you can't go to Morocco and not stay in a Riyadh. And I know we had a an amazing one planned. We were even going to do, I think, a cooking class with them. And it looked, it was going to be so amazing. I don't know if I have my name of the one that we were going to have to, that we were going to stay at. So I'd have to do a lot of research again to decide which one to stay in. But I also know that, um, especially in Fez, I mean, 
those markets, you can get lost in. I mean, they are crazy. So I think we ha- we're going to take a tour one day with someone to from Biotour, Get Your Guide, or one of those um, tour companies to kind of get the lay of the land. I think that's a good idea when you go to Morocco because you you could you yeah. know, twisting and turning and trying to find your way back to where you were is kind of tough. The next place I wanted to go to, and I don't even know how you pronounce this, is Chefjanan. I don't know. It's, it's the blue city. I call it the blue city. And if you see pictures, everything is in blue. It looks gorgeous. Um, and we were going to take a private transfer to get there, and that's probably what I would do. I will, and I think it's it's a few hours to get there. And that place that I would either have to do some research about private boutique hotels. I don't believe there's any type of a chain hotel there, and that would maybe be the place that I'd stay in a Riyadh, just if that uh, Merit Hotel in Fez you know, would work out. So then I'd probably stay in a Riyadh there. So from there, we got to get home somewhere and you're not going to get home from the blue city. So you might as well go to Casablanca because I think Casablanca would be amazing to visit to. The hardest thing that I haven't quite figured it out is getting from the blue city into Casablanca. So if anybody listening has done that, please reach out to me and let me know how you did it. I think that you can do um, kind of a shuttle airplane combo where you go to um, another big city. And I'm forgetting, I didn't write it down. I should have written it down. Um, so you go to another city up in the north by shuttle and then take a airplane into Casablanca. But once you get into Casablanca, you can stay at the Hyatt Regency for 15K a night, and that is always a good deal. I'm always trying to find more Hyatt hotels to stay at. One, because I love them, and two, because I need to get my elite night to keep my globalist status. Oh, and three, so I can use my globalist status benefit. So, you know, those are three reasons, but you could also stay at a Marriott. There are two Marriott's there currently and a Ritz Carlton is coming soon. So lots of choices there. And then there was a great deal that I found um, yesterday coming home from Casablanca to New York City for 55k on Air France. So it sounds amazing. I would love you two to come. I know it's might be a little bit more than a week when you start adding up all those things, or maybe we'd have to get rid of one of our des- one of the destinations that I'd like to go to. But Morocco, I'm coming for you. Well, you know what I'm going to do is you just said we might have to get rid of a destination. Well, I'm going to add a destination because I would love to go into the desert and do one of those desert tours where you go and you stay in a really nice tent and you have that whole traditional desert experience so i and the dale says i know it takes a while to get to the desert sometimes you have to travel pretty far out to get a you know a somebody to drive you into the desert and then you take your camels in you stay in the tent i think that looks like such a cool experience like such a bucket list bucket list experience that when are you gonna ever have that again i agree i think travel mom squad needs to make this happen so girls i'm just waiting for your availability and look <laughs> I am also down for the desert stay in a, is it like, is it like glamping? Yeah. Your destination is a place I want to return to. So I'm happy to accompany you on this trip. Yeah. So my destination, one of the top destinations on my bucket list is Thailand. I have wanted to go there for so long, especially. So my mom, when did you go? Do you remember what year you went, mom? It was my very first big points of miles destination it was the first time that i used points of miles to to fly in business class and uh use them for a luxury hotel so it has a really soft spot spot in my heart it must have been about 2018 yeah yeah so anyway this was really high on my list i know we've talked about it at one point of going there like my mom and my sisters and then that morphed into let's go on a couple's trip with just the adults my parents my siblings their spouses 
So I thought like, oh, Mitch and I can go there, but I think it's got to be our, uh, the family trip with the spouses. It's just a matter of like us taking, I think you, me and you mom need to like take control and be like, okay, here's where we're going. Who wants to come? This is where we're going. If you want to come, come. If you can't, then, then you can't, but. Yeah, it's so, so hard when you're doing a big group to try to come yeah. up with a date. And that's the trouble that we're having. We're ready to go. Trying to come up with a date is a problem. For sure. So here's how I would do it. For flight, I would do Singapore Airlines. The reason I do Singapore Airlines, first of all, it's so easy to earn points with them because all of the major banks transfer them to them. They are very easy to find availability to compared to some of the others. Because another option I had in my mind was, oh, maybe I'll try to fly Q Suite and, you know, go through Doha. Something I want to note too before I forget is there's no direct flights from the U.S. to Thailand. You're going to have to connect somewhere. So one thought was, okay, I could connect in Doha and do Q Suite, but it's really hard to find availability. So I'd love to do that, but I don't, you know, it's just going to take a lot more work. Whereas Singapore Airlines, is so much easier to find availability. You still, if you want to get like, they have um, like Sabre Award prices and Advantage prices. So the earlier you book, the cheaper your flight will be in points. And so that's something to keep in mind. But if you're flexible with your dates, it's so much easier to find award flights. With Singapore, it's very easy to search. It's not, you know, you don't have to do airline alliances or any of these things. It's, I think for a beginner, especially, it's very simple. So. I would do Singapore Airlines. Economy is going to cost 42,000 miles. I would also fly out of San Francisco. So I'd get myself to San Francisco, position there. And then from San Francisco, we'd connect in Singapore. And then from Singapore, go to, you could either fly into Phuket or Bangkok. So 42,000 miles in economy. Business is 107,000 miles. Those are the Sabre Awards. The other thing that's really neat about Singapore Airlines is you can get a free stopover. So if you want to stay in Singapore for a couple of days and see the sights, you could do that. So my understanding with how the um, stopovers work with Singapore is if you're doing the Saver Award, the cheaper ones, you only get a free stopover if you book a round trip flight. If you book the Advantage Award, which is a little more expensive, I believe the business class on Advantage is 148000 443 because I've done 143, it. 143 okay. I don't remember what it is on economy. But if you book the Advantage prices, you can get a free stopover on a one-way flight. So, you know, if you want to do the stopover and you want to do the cheaper prices, you might just want to do round trip on Singapore Airlines. So that's what I would do for my flights. I think I would probably fly into Bangkok and then maybe out of Phuket. So yeah, that's what I do for my flights. Super easy. Now, here was the tricky part. When I started to look at my hotels, is originally I was thinking, okay, I could probably go for 10 days. It's like, that's about my max for being able to leave my kids. But then I was like, okay, well, I want to go here and I want to go here and I want to go here. And I don't know if, like, I just chose the places I want to go. On a map, it probably doesn't make sense to go from like this city to this city to this city. These are not in the right order. And I've realized as I put these cities on, I am going to have to do two trips there <laughs> or go for two weeks. And I don't know if two weeks is possible. So I think this would be way too much to fit in on one trip to Thailand. But I'm going to still share all the places that I want to go. So anyways, starting off. I'd fly into Bangkok. I think that's a great jumping off point. I would just stay here for like a couple nights to, you know, get used to the time change, see the sights there. For hotels there, there's a Hyatt Regency, which is a category three. So standard pricing is just 12,000 points a night. Then there's a Park Hyatt, which is a category six. It's 25,000 points a night. And there's a Facebook globalist group and people in that group talk about both of these hotels a lot and they love both of them and kind of what my takeaway was from what other people were saying is like just stay at the Hyatt Regency because it's so much cheaper the Park Hyatt's really great but the Regency's almost just like it's it's not for the price difference it's not that much better to stay at the Park Hyatt so I may just stay at the Hyatt Regency because you're gonna see later I'm gonna see some other really nice hotels so I might like 
go a little cheaper in Bangkok? Well, I know when I went to Bangkok and I stayed there just, it was like just a couple um, nights. I stayed at a Marriott that was right next. I think it was like Orchid something. It might have been a Sheraton. I can't remember, but it had the name Orchid in it. And it was right next to a mall. Great um, way to, they had a riverboat that went down the uh, river. You could stop at different tables. It was very convenient. So there are a lot of other chain hotels in Bangkok. The other thing, if someone doesn't have enough point the miles to cover everything and you're wanting to pay for your flight, maybe cover some hotel for your Thailand adventure. The thing that I love so much about traveling in Asia is how cheap it is. So you can even save some of your points, or if you don't have enough points, just book with cash because it is cheap, cheap, cheap. One of the best things about traveling in Asia as a couple, or especially for bringing your family, is that everything is just so much cheaper. And can we talk about the massages in Thailand for one second? I got a massage in Thailand every single day, and I paid between probably 7 and $20. It is like the, that's pulling me back there. It's a massage <laughs> mega. For, no, I can't wait to go back to Thailand. Yeah, that does sound really, really nice. So one thing I want to say, too, before I get into these other places is there is a website called Aways. I'll put a link of it for it in the show notes. But basically, you put in where you want to go, what city, and it will pull up hotels that you can book with points in that city. And so I use that because I was like, I don't know what there is in Phuket. I'm going to use that to help me find it. So I use that as a jumping off point, and then I chose my hotels from there. So Aways is a really great resource if you're like, I have no idea what award hotels are in this space. What can I even use? Where can I even use my points? So another place I want to go while I'm in Thailand is Koh Samui. I would just take a cheap flight from Bangkok or Phuket, wherever I am. And I really, really want to stay at the Hilton Conrad there. It looks incredibly nice. The rooms have their own private pool. It's 95,000 points a night, or you can use your free night certificate that you get from holding the Aspire card or for spending $15,000 a year on the Surpass card. So that is like a bucket list Hilton property that I really want to stay at. So I definitely have to go there, cross that property because like we have travel destinations that are on our bucket list, but we also have hotels that are on our bucket list. And this is one of the hotels on my travel bucket list. So gotta go stay there if I'm in Thailand. It's on my um, list too, Alex. So luckily we'll probably be going there together. But um, the one thing I have heard from a couple sites that the rooms may be a little outdated or a little old. So if anybody's listening and can give firsthand knowledge about that, I'd love to hear about that. But yeah, it looked amazing. So I've been wanting to do that too. Yeah, I think there's a Hyatt Regency there, too. And so it might be kind of, you know, might be nice to hotel hop, Mom. Try I and can do it. So it just like the it just looks like a really beautiful location, too. So and then I'd also want to go to Phuket. There's a Hyatt Regency there. It's a category three. So just 12,000 points per night. My mom has actually stayed there. And then there's also a lot of Marriott options as well. Mom, what did you think about? That, do you remember? I mean, I know it was a while ago. Yeah, I, I really liked it because it kind of, you have, you know, just a direct view of the um, ocean. Um, and it was a really nice resort. I thought the food was good. But then you can walk down to get more at the area, that the beach that's right. Um, where they have loungers you can rent, a lot more eating areas, get into the downtown um part of at least that part of Phuket. I don't know if it's the main part of Phuket, but we had great massages there and go right back to the place we went to. And I really liked it. I thought it was a, it was a great hotel and I'd be happy to return there too. So after Phuket, well I actually don't know after because like I said, this is not in any particular order. This is just this places I want to go. So another place I want to go would be Krabby Town. So there you can that's where you can find the long tail boat rides amazing amazing beaches stunning like when i think of thailand there's those pictures of the rock formations coming out of the beach with the grassy they're green and rocky 
that is where you will find those. So there's a thousand percent. I'm going to go there when I go to Thailand. Can't miss it. There's no Hyatts there, so I won't be staying at a Hyatt. There's one Marriott. It's a Ritz Carlton Reserve, but it's over. When I was looking, it was over a hundred thousand points a night. So not gonna stay there. There's a Holiday Inn Resort, low cash rate, around a hundred dollars a night or twenty thousand points a night, but it didn't look very nice. So I'm not gonna go stay at the Holiday Inn Resort. Me personally. I want to say somewhere really nice. So this is where I would maybe splurge since I'm using points for other hotels. I'm using points for my flights. I would maybe look at staying at the Banyan Tree. Banyan Tree is such a nice brand, like so luxurious. It is a partner with Accor Hotels and they're a transfer partner of Capital One, but it's a two to one rate. So I have to transfer two points from Capital One to get one Accor point. So not a good rate. So I wouldn't do that. I'd rather save my venture miles for something else. But hi, guys, I was looking at the hotel and I was like, okay, yeah, I think I think this looks pretty good. So it would definitely be a splurge, but I feel like I can justify it when I'm paying hardly anything else for that trip. I know you said you were going to go with your siblings, but if any of them can't go, then I volunteer to be Pam's fifth daughter and i volunteer to pretend to be an orge for the trip we had you at banyan tree right that's where you're like okay banyan tree i'm in well you had me at like the quintessential thailand like i know what you're i can like see it in my head yeah and then you got to the banyan tree and i was like okay this is sounding pretty good i can get on board so that i just want to say to anybody who considers a trip like this and if you go to Krabby Town I do have a post um about my trip to Thailand years ago it was a group Audemon something or other that we did our long tail boat um trip with my friend and I they were amazing it was the most breathtaking trip you know boat trip I've ever taken and they took to several different places, there was a hidden beach. And then um, the girl that we were with took us to the beach and cooked us some Thai food. Honestly, I've said it before, I'm not the most adventurous eater and I loved everything that she made. It was really a highlight, you know. So um, check that out if you, you know, ever go to Krabby Town. And when I was there, I couldn't find a chain hotel at that time. And so I took some random hotel. was the least favorite of any of the hotels I stayed at. So I'm not going to even tell you what it was because it wasn't my favorite. But um, I would do the same thing, Alex. I would happily pay to stay at Banyan Tree for such a bucket list day. Um, since I'm not paying for hardly anything else. You know, and when you go... When you don't go with your spouse, when you go with girls trip or things like that, it makes it more affordable because then you can split the cost of a nice hotel like that. So, but I, but then also like, oh, it'd be really fun to take Mitch on a trip like this and get to experience something like that together. Yeah. Okay. So like I said, you guys, there's a lot of places in Thailand I want to go. So that's already probably too much, but I also really want to go to Chiang Mai. So Chiang Mai is where you will find the elephant sanctuaries. Now, mom, you've done the elephant sanctuaries, and I think there's a lot of, when you think of the elephants in Thailand, people sometimes think of riding elephants and doing all these no. other things, and that is something we would not do or recommend. No. The one these that elephant I would, sanctuaries, yeah. yes, there's, you're there to observe the elephants, not to do other things with the elephants. It's a, it's safe, it's not like the Thailand of animal so- tourism that where the animals are, you know, basically getting abused. This is nice now ethical is, things. Yeah, this is where they've taken those poor elephants who have been abused or ridden and all this stuff happened to them and they recover them and they give them a sanctuary. And um, it was phenomenal. I mean, you can, you know, get close to them and touch them. They, you can, the, um, you can bathe them or help bathe them in the, um, rivers you know and it was it was it was an amazing experience but it's definitely about taking care of the elephant and and, um giving them sanctuary so in chiang mai 
there are a few different points options. There are some Mr. and Mrs. Smith properties that you can book through Hyatt, but you definitely would want to make sure and see if it's worth it because the Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Smith properties have dynamic pricing. So it might be better to pay cash than to use your points. So for example, there was one I found called the Alinta, Alinta Retreat. Could be saying that wrong. It was about $200 a night, the cash rate, or 29,000 Hyatt points. So I would personally pay the cash rate because 29,000 points is to me is worth a lot more than $200. I could use 29,000 points. Well, for example, it's 30,000 points to get a room in Hawaii. And those rooms in Hawaii are, have a cash rate of upwards of $1,000. So I personally wouldn't use my points if the cash rate is that low. So, and, and that place looked really, really nice, by the way. Uh, there's also an intercontinental. It was about cash rates, about $235 or 40,000 points. That one, if you have the IHG card, that could be a good use of your free night certificate because those free night certificates are up to 40,000 points. You also can top those off, which is nice. There's also a Chiang Mai Marriott Hotel, but you can book that between 30 and 50,000 points per night. Could be another great use of a Marriott free night certificate. And this hotel was also recently renovated. So I'm a big fan of recently renovated hotels. So I wonder if that Ching Mai Marriott Hotel is the same hotel I stand at that was called the Lord Meridian. At I one think point. it is because yeah. when I was looking, I was seeing, like, I think the Away's website maybe was saying La Meridian, but then I would click on it and I would search for La Meridian. Nothing came up except the Ching Mai Marriott Hotel. So my guess is they rebranded it when they did the renovation. And I really liked that hotel. It was in a really good location for walking to the night market or walking around the city. Um, when I was there, we did a bike ride of the city, went to several um, temples, went to the night market. I remember I had a $3 foot massage in the night market. Um, and so it, you know, it, it's just a really convenient hotel to stay at. Oh, also, Alec. Um, for flights there, you'd asked me about my flights there. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so I flew a little different. I flew Eva Airlines. Again, I positioned to San Francisco. Now, Eva is a partner of... Um, city, right? City. And so I had uh, signed up for a city card, gotten my thank you points, transferred them over. I also had transferred over some of my husband's. I will right up front say that Eva is not the easiest um, airline to work with with your transfer partners. They're not the easiest for customer service to get a hold of, but it worked fine. I went economy plus flying over there because my friend had never flown business class before and then did business coming back. Their business is great. You get pajamas, you know. Um, I just have to, you know. Shout out to Pam for being a good friend and flying premium economy. But I wasn't so used to being class in those days. Or I probably would have said, no, you're on your own. Go to your know. Well, you'll be like, I'll see you when we get off the plane. Like, it's not like you were going to be on the same plane with her. But it was one of my first international trips. It was a huge trip. Yeah. It was her very first. And I thought, I can't just leave her alone. You know, nowadays, we kind of know what I would do. But anyway. So Yes, peace out. But, you know, Eva was a great, is a great airlines. I just think that it, uh, you know, it's not as cut and dry in transferring and booking. And if you have any changes, I think the biggest problem is that I ended up point left in there and I lost them because it just was difficult to figure out how to extend them. And I wasn't getting a lot of support. There wasn't a lot, but, you know, yeah, a little harder to use. So anyway, that is Thailand for me. Singapore Airlines, Bangkok, Koh Samui, Phuket, Krabi, Town, and Chiang Mai. That's a lot. That's about one more place than I went. I, I didn't go to um, Koh Samui, and I did it in 10 days. I did it in 10 days, but uh, yeah. like I said, it didn't include uh, Koh Samui. Yeah. Okay, Jess, where are you off to? Y'all, I have like revamped a little bit of this trip since we've been on this call. 
So one of my, I have many bucket list destinations. That's not going to come as a shock to anyone. So my biggest, like number one bucket list is Antarctica, but that is very difficult to do on point to mile. So I'm not going to be talking about that one today. Although and when I you do can go, go there, to Antarctica without me, I'm good. I know. Getting there looks like a nightmare. That Drake Strait. They're not going to want to go any of the places I'm about to say, but they don't like going to places that are cold, but they live in Denver and Salt Lake City. So let's make that make sense. That's why we don't. That's why. Yeah, we get enough of it here. Okay. So Antarctica is my number one. If and when I ever go, I'll use points and miles to like fly to Argentina and stay at the hotel before and after. But like the, the cruise to Antarctica itself, unless I had like a billion Capital One miles, I'm not going to be able to cover that portion um, with points. So that's that's a little further down the road. That's like when I'm Pam. That's my Pam goal. Whatever. Jess is going. I give her three years, guys, and she's there, if not sooner. She has no chill. My more realistic bucket list destination that I'm hoping to make it to before the end of 2025 is Iceland. And I was initially torn about when I want to go because part of me wants to go to see the Northern Lights. But then I'm like, that's a gamble because what if I go and there's no Northern Lights and the weather is really crappy, you know? And so I'm kind of torn I had originally said I wanted to go like around October, but now I don't know. So, well, you could just go twice. I could just go twice. I could go once in the summer because like the summer is the most popular time to go because the weather, yeah. that's when the weather's the best. That's when more of the roads are open. And so it's either going to be like October or summer. There are no direct flights to Iceland from Houston. So no matter which airline I fly, I'm going to have to position somewhere or have a layover somewhere. So I would likely fly from Houston to Manchester on Singapore Airlines. My shocker. I've never talked about that route before, so I'm sure it's news to all of you. Um, So I would fly Houston to Singapore and then catch an Iceland Air flight from Manchester to Reykjavik. And I looked at how much that would be, and it was like $225 a round trip, which I feel like is pretty good. So I would probably just use Singapore miles to get from Houston to Manchester. Um, You can fly for 25,000 miles in economy or 52,000 in premium economy or 81,000 in business. Like Alex was saying earlier, all four banks transfer to Singapore. So really easy to rack up those miles. So I'd probably fly to Manchester using miles and then just pay cash for the flight from Manchester to Reykjavik. Another option for me was United. That was 40,000 miles each way in economy with a stop in Newark. That's not terrible, but it's just harder for me to justify transferring my chase points to United especially because I would bring like Ted, Ted wants to go, Ella wants to go, Molly wants to go, like there would be at least four of us. And so 40,000 miles each way in economy times four. I'm just thinking about all those high hotels I'd be missing out on. I guess I could open some more United cards, but that's an option. And then here's where my newest idea came in. So you can use Alaska miles to book Iceland air. You can also have a stopover in Iceland. And so I found the only problem is it's hard to rack up Alaska miles. None of the banks transfer to Alaska. Built transfers to Alaska now. So if you have built miles, you could transfer some of those over. So getting the Alaska co-branded cards are the easiest way to rack up these miles. But I could fly from Chicago. So I could position to Chicago. I could fly from Chicago to Reykjavik, stay there for a few days, and then fly from Reykjavik to Dublin. Ireland is another bucket list destination for me. I've never been to Ireland. 27,500 miles in economy. Ding, ding, ding. Nice. Nice. Or Chicago to Reykjavik, Reykjavik to Dublin. That's amazing. 27,500 miles. And obviously, I want to go to Ireland in the summer. Like, I wouldn't want to go to Ireland in the winter. So now I'm kind of thinking summer 2025 needs to be this yeah i like it yeah that's you already have alaska miles or do you need to go earn them i do have a decent so 
we opened a couple of Alaska cards last year. Like I think I opened two and Ted opened two. And I didn't have a plan for them because I don't really ever fly Alaska out of Houston. But I know that they have sweet spots like this. And so when they had those increased welcome offers, I was like, well, I'm just going to get them and sock those away for once I figure out what I want to do with them. And then when I was researching this Iceland trip, I was like, wow, this would be the perfect use for those miles. Um, It is an economy. But the tricky thing about Iceland is like from Chicago, it's a six hour flight. You know, so it's yeah. not it's not one that I'm like, I have to be in business class for that. Like oh. I I would well, and Iceland Air doesn't business. really have a great business class. No, Iceland Air, like their business class is the equivalent of premium economy, really. Like they don't have life lot seats. And so um so I'm well, totally fine. The stopover deal. I mean, you yeah. gotta do that. That's two countries for the price of one. That's like that's definitely calling your name. Yeah. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to pitch that for summer 2025. Um, And then hotels, hotels in Iceland are tricky with points. So Alex and I discovered a Hyatt centric is coming to Reykjavik, but we don't know when. I feel like this has been rumored for so years. Long. And then the pandemic happened. Like this was rumored before the pandemic. I remember reading about this five years ago. Then the pandemic happened. I don't know if that completely stalled things. But we looked it up on the Hyatt site and it says like pipeline next to it, which I think it means like it's in the pipeline. But I don't know if that means it's going to be another five years until it exists or what that means. So I'm ca- I'm like optimistic, but not that it's going to be done before I want to go there. And then there are some Mr. and Mrs. Smith options now that look pretty cool. Like there's there's like a blue lagoon because I want to go to the blue lagoon. I want to do the golden circle. And there's like a blue lagoon Mr. and Mrs. Smith hotel. But it's redi- like the number of points required are ridiculous, like Alex was saying, because of the dynamic pricing. So if I were to stay there, I'd probably use cash. There is a Hilton Reykjavik that actually looked really nice and had good reviews. And it was around 60,000 Hilton points a night, which is pretty good for Hilton. No IHG properties at all in Iceland. So there and there's also a Marriott Reykjavik Edition Hotel that was around 65 to 75,000 Marriott points a night when I looked. So a few options, not a ton. And then in Dublin, there's the Hyatt Centric, which Pam has stayed at. And I think you liked that one, right, Pam? So I'd probably stay at the Hyatt Centric. It was very, very central, easily walkable to everywhere. And so, yeah, I would I would definitely stay there. And it's a Category 4. The Hyatt Centric wow. Dublin is a Category 4. So you can use your free night certificates there. So I think, I think I'm going to have to do the Alaska Airlines, Reykjavik, and Dublin double whammy i'd probably stay at the hilton in reykjavik and the hyatt centric in dublin if i were gonna if i were gonna plan this now yeah double bucket list destination trip awesome so now that we've talked about our bucket list trips and how we would do it i think we need to make that happen and then we'll report back to you guys we hope that you see from this episode that points and miles can make your bucket list dreams possible If you're ready to get started, check out our free webinar, How to Get Your Next Vacation for Nearly Free. We've linked it in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button from wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Want to start jet setting even faster? Follow the links in the show notes to learn about everything we discussed in today's episode. And to stay connected and follow along, Follow us on Instagram at Travel Mom Squad. We can't wait to see where in the world points and miles take you.